Hello, Hunters, and welcome back to Super Fan Natural. Hunters, oh, holy crap! On February 18th, I officially hit 10,000 subscribers. Now, in the grand scheme of YouTube, that's not all that crazy. I mean, you don't get a play button for 10k, and there's many channels with multi-millions of subs. However, for me personally, 10,000 is a huge deal. Just the idea that 10,000 people saw stuff that I made and decided they wanted to see more, it's just really hard to believe. To celebrate the occasion, I wanted to give you guys a different kind of video, one that might let you get to know me just a little bit better. I put up a community post asking for questions you wanted answered, and while I didn't get that many responses, I did get enough for a video. Then I got really, really sick for a hot sec. Hence why this video is a bit late, and also why I still sound like this. But better late than never, right? So here's my special 10k Q&A for you. If this just doesn't interest you, like, at all, don't worry, there'll be another video later, this is just an extra one. Also, sorry for the sick voice, I want this video to come out close to when I hit 10k, so here we are. I think the best question to start with is, what got me into the show in the first place? And honestly, the answer is kind of boring, I just saw it on TV one day. I unfortunately didn't get to start with the show from the very beginning, it just wasn't really on my radar during the first two seasons. I sort of vaguely remember seeing commercials for the show, but for whatever reason, I guess it just didn't leave an impression. Then one day, I was just looking for something to watch and I saw Supernatural and thought, hey, that sounds kind of interesting, and gave it a shot. My first episode was Season 3, Episode 2, the one where they introduced Ben and Lisa and it revolves around the Changelings. I thought it was pretty good, but wanted to see more, so I went out and got the first two seasons on DVD, and what can I say, I was hooked. Like, really hooked. I've thought about why exactly the series gripped me so thoroughly, and I think it came down to being a perfect storm of things I really enjoyed. I've always been a huge fan of folklore and monsters and magic and all things creepy and cryptid, and I mean the show's called Supernatural, so hard to go wrong there. Also, I really enjoy urban fantasy, which is basically the genre of monsters existing in the real modern day society. Don't get me wrong, I love a good high fantasy setting, but there's always just something appealing about the idea that these otherworldly creatures could be walking alongside you in the city streets and you don't even realize, and obviously that's like the show's whole premise. Finally, I was really drawn to the darker and grittier tone of the early seasons. Part of that could be because I was a shitty angsty teen at the time, but I don't know, I still kind of prefer the tone of the show from the earlier seasons. Like, I feel the series really hit the perfect balance of serious and silly in seasons 4 and 5. Anyway, I found the show on my own, and for years, I didn't actually know anyone else who watched it. In fact, it wasn't until college that I met other fans in person. I remember this one time when I was in college choir, we were flying to New Orleans, and I was sat next to this girl who I didn't really know, and at one point we got chit-chatting, and we started telling each other what we wanted to do in the city. I was telling her about this like haunted tour or something I wanted to go on, and she was telling me about how she's so scared of ghosts and hauntings, and she would need to go buy iron and rock salt if she was going to go on anything like that. And I asked her if she's seen Supernatural, and she said yeah, so we were able to talk about that for the next hour or so. And that was really one of the first times I was ever able to like geek out with another fan in person. Then a few years later, we got married! No, I'm just kidding about that part. But I did actually get my real wife to watch through the series with me for the first time just last year. And that's actually one of the things that pushed me to finally make this channel. And yeah, that's basically my origin story. Alright, next up. Who is my favorite character? This is a tough one. I really like Dean. And there were times I also really resonated with Sam. But if I had to pick just one character, I'd have to go with Castiel. And it's not just because he's a little lost puppy in human form. Now, there are a few things that make Cass not only one of my favorite characters in the show, but also one of my favorite in all of fiction. Mostly, I just think he has a really compelling character arc revolving around the search for purpose. Like, when we first met him, he believed that he had been getting his orders from God himself, and he'd had this divine righteous purpose for hundreds of thousands of years. Then in the course of a single year, his faith is shaken, and he ends up turning against heaven for the sake of mankind's freedom. He spends the next decade searching desperately for a way to contribute, to fulfill some kind of role and to make his existence mean something, and he ends up making a bunch of mistakes, some of which are pretty catastrophic, but you know, that's kind of part of trying to find purpose. Now admittedly, in later seasons, Cass didn't always have much to do, but I still think his character arc comes to a beautiful end. Alright, so in addition to my favorite character, I got questions about my favorite angel, demon, and monster, so let's talk about those. 
Since I already put Cass as my favorite overall character, I'll give the best angel spot to my number two pick, Zachariah. I absolutely love this pissy middle management asshole. He's one of my favorite secondary antagonists in the series because of just how slimy and petty he was. A lot of the appeal definitely comes from Kurt Fuller, who was like genetically engineered to be the perfect business dick, so if someone else played the role, he might not have ended up as one of my favorites. As for my favorite demon, oh god, how do I want to put this? Crowley is definitely one of my favorite characters. I mean, how could he not be? However, because of how he kind of waffles from being good to bad, I sometimes forget that he's a demon. Also, I was never really a huge fan of how he turned hell into an office space and demons into pencil pushers. It's just not how I like my demons. If I had to pick one demon that really sold the idea of being an evil spirit, I would have to go with Azazel. This is another case where I think the, a lot of the appeal comes from the actor, but Frederick Lane just has this weird energy sometimes where I really felt like I was watching this ancient inhuman thing wearing a human bodysuit. Alistair is a close second, he gave off constant demon vibes, but there's just something about old Yellow Eyes that really stuck with me. When it comes to my favorite monster, there's absolutely no contest. It's Lucy, the shapeshifter who turned into Universal Monsters. Shapeshifters are already some of my favorite monsters. I like their power and I feel like they lend themselves to some really fun and creative episodes. And this dude gave us one of the wackiest in the series. I find it hysterical that he's just this weird film nerd who was shunned by everyone as a kid, and when he discovered he had the power to turn into anyone, he decided, I'll be Dracula, and in order to get the girl, I'll also be Dracula, and she'll totally be into that. He also uses his powers in cool and unique ways, which is always appreciated, though it is a little weird that we never got to see another shapeshifter do anything like turning into a mummy or a wolfman again. Let's finish up the favorites with my favorite storyline. This one is super easy, it's the apocalypse in season 5. I don't really feel like I need to give a long-winded explanation here. It seems like the apocalypse is a top pick for most fans. In fact, some people like this arc so much that they stop watching the show afterwards, like they just end the series with season 5. I don't necessarily think that that's the best call, but hey, I'm not going to sit here and hassle you about your TV watching habits. When it comes to my least favorite storyline, there are a few options. If we're sticking to just the main plot lines, then it would have to be the British Men of Letters. I really wanted to like this story, especially because it was something completely new and not another grand cosmic doomsday, but ultimately it ended up being really dull and predictable. I mean, it's already a pretty questionable start to say that there's been this super powerful group of hunters and techno wizards hiding in the shadows this whole time, and they knew about all the world ending catastrophes, but just didn't feel like it was their problem. Like, there might be a way to make that make sense, but the show doesn't really give one, it just kind of ends up feeling like these dweebs really thought that it wasn't their problem if the world ended. Beyond that, I felt like I could see every single story beat coming from a mile away. I kind of hoped that the writers would use the British to shake up the status quo a bit, but in the end, they didn't really do anything spectacular. So that's my least favorite of the main storylines, but out of all the plots in the show, there's only one that I like genuinely hate, and you already know what it is, it's Sam's season 8 girlfriend. My god was this a miss. I get what they were going for, Sam wanting a life away from hunting has been a part of his character since the beginning, but this clearly ain't it. As soon as you see this lady, you know, you know that she's either dying, getting scared off by the existence of monsters, or Sam will just dump her ass to try and keep her safe. And look at that, that's exactly what happened. I don't know, maybe I'm just a whiz at guessing the twists and turns of love stories, but I doubt it. Not only did the writers decide to make this a love story, they had the gall to make it a love triangle, and a soap opera love triangle at that. Who wanted this? Really, who? Who looked at the show about brothers hunting monsters and thought, I wish one of them would fall in love with a woman whose husband died, but then it turns out he didn't actually die, and they both have to decide who they want to be with. Also, and I don't want to make this seem like I'm blaming the actress, because I don't think it's her fault, Amelia is just a really boring character. Like, the only part of her personality that I can remember is how bitchy she was at Sam for hitting the dog. And look, I hate seeing animals get hurt, but it was an accident, yet she acted like Sam was intentionally hunting the dog down for a hit and run. I don't want to harp on this anymore, I don't like being so negative, I feel like I've made my point. I just really don't care one single bit about this weird love story. So a question that I got from a few people is whether or not I liked the decision to make God a bad guy. 
I feel like this is one of the most divisive choices in the show, and I totally understand why some people don't like it, but personally, I think it was kind of a cool idea. Don't get me wrong, the execution was a little off in places, and there are a few things I would change if given the chance, but I feel like the idea is really interesting. Like, the core theme of the show is free will versus fate, so who better to have as the final boss than the guy who has ultimate control over everything? Now I'll fully admit that a lot of my enjoyment of this twist or whatever comes down to not only taste, but also interpretation of the text. Like when they say that the god has been manipulating the Winchesters the whole time, I don't take that as him personally orchestrating every single event in the series. Instead, I see that more as him subtly influencing events so that things never fully settle down. For example, I don't think that Chuck wrote Dean into getting the Mark of Cain, but once that happened, he did start more directly directing events so that he get the ending where Dean kills Sam and gets warped away to live with his guilt forever. But then, you know, that didn't happen, and Dean instead kills Death and the darkness is released, and this is an example of how Chuck's meddling can end up biting him in the ass. That's just how I personally read into things. If you don't agree, I completely understand. There's way more I want to say to try and sway people to my point of view, but I think that deserves its own video. Alright, next up. Which character would I get along with best? I really want to say that it would be one of the Winchesters, and you know what? I probably would to a certain extent. Like, Dean and I could probably talk about horror movies for a while, but I kind of feel like his favorites are going to be the fake ones that only exist in the world of Supernatural. You know, like All Saints Day. And obviously, I'm not going to have much to say about that. Oh shit, but you know what? We could watch them together, and that would be pretty sweet. I don't really know what Sam and I would do or talk about. Like, my personality is probably closer to his than Dean's, but I just don't know what he does for fun. Maybe I'd get along with Cass. He's probably got some cool stories to tell, but I also think he might be the kind of person that starts telling a really interesting tale, then decides to focus on the least interesting details at length. I definitely don't think I'd gel with Bobby, our personalities are just too different. Same with Crowley and Rowena and Gabriel, though Gabe could definitely whip up some fun that doesn't involve talking. I don't want to say it's Becky, I don't want to say Becky, I don't want to say Becky, it might be Becky, but I don't want to say it's Becky, but it might be Becky. Now you know what, I'm going to go with Garth. I feel like you gotta actively work to not gel with Garth. Next question, do I want a season 16? I mean, I guess I wouldn't be opposed to that if there was an interesting story, but for the most part, I don't think that the show needs one. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely would love to see more Supernatural content, I just don't think the best way to do that is to force Sam and Dean's story to continue on. What I personally would love to see would be something along the lines of a short 13 episode season of self-contained episodes that show off hunters from different time periods. Like, one episode could follow the first European settlers to North America having to deal with monsters that they've never even heard of. Another could follow a hunter in medieval times that has to fight monsters with a suit of silver armor or something. Dude, show us a samurai hunter in feudal Japan taking on some of the six Shinto monsters. I don't know, personally I think something like that would be way more interesting than the boys being sent back to Earth to take on just one more big bad, but that's just me. Next up, if you could bring back one character, who would you pick? There's a few characters that I really wish could have gotten more screen time. The one that immediately jumps out to me is Eve. Though really, I wouldn't bring her back so much as I just wouldn't have killed her off after three episodes. I guess the one I'll go with is Jesse Turner, the half-demon antichrist kid. Not only does the series not really give him any kind of closure, I actually think there was a really good place for him later on in the show. I think it would have been really cool if he was somehow brought back to mentor Jack in season 13. One of the big parts of Jack's story is that nobody really knows how to connect with him. He's not fully human, he's not fully angel, he's this weird, super powerful in-between that nobody really understands. Wouldn't it have been kinda cool if Cass realized that, oh wait, we've dealt with another super hybrid before, and he somehow tracks down Jesse so that he can hopefully relate to Jack and maybe teach him what it's like to be a not fully human walking nuke? Maybe things start out well enough, they connect and seem to make good progress, but then maybe Jesse decides that Jack is too dangerous for whatever reason, and he tries to destroy him or something. I don't know, I just think something like that would have been a good way to tie up that weird loose end and make a connection between the show's two antichrists. The last of the show-related questions I got was which character do I feel was underrated? There's a few characters that I feel are a bit slept on, but one that stands out to me is Lily Sunder. I don't really see a lot of love for her, which is weird because in my opinion, she's one of the most badass characters in the series. This chick watched her family get killed by angels, something that I feel would pretty thoroughly break the spirit of most people, but not Lily. 
She chooses violent revenge, and in order to get it, she learns or possibly invents some kind of twisted sorcery that lets her use angel magic by burning away pieces of her soul. That's so hardcore. Also, this insane magic didn't just let her get revenge, it was also the only thing that could cure Jack, and by providing said cure, Lily was able to die relatively peacefully with just enough good deeds and just enough soul left to reunite with her daughter in a heaven that had been rid of her psychotic angel ex. Basically, she gets pretty much everything she wanted and looked really cool doing it, and not enough people recognize. Alright Hunters, now it's my turn to ask you a question. Would you guys be interested in seeing content from this channel covering shows other than Supernatural? Don't worry, I still have plenty of Supernatural content to come, and I don't plan for it to ever not be the focus of the channel. But if there's interest, I'd totally be down to make videos about other series such as Stargate, Star Wars, The Magicians, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and more. Let me know what you think. And with that, my sweet hunters, I bring this 10k Q&A to a close. I hope you enjoyed it, and that you feel much closer to me. I definitely feel closer to you. So close. Anyway, once again, thank you guys so much for all the support. Let's keep the hunt going strong. I'll have more for you soon, but for now, carry on.